Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and I wanted to show you Android P. This is out for developers and it's not easy to install. You have to use a computer to install it and generally wipe your phone for the most part. You can install it through the side loading method on whichever device is supported. In this case, I've got it running on the Pixel XL and here we have the Pixel 2 XL running Android Oreo so I can show you a quick comparison. Now the first thing is the home screen, these are just the default layout. I'm using the wallpaper selected from the landscapes here in wallpapers. And this is just the default setup. And you'll see down here, it's changed a little bit. We've got the little Google search down here with a little box around it. It's just a little bit different than on Android Oreo. And then the next thing you'll notice, if you take a look at the time here in the upper left, you'll see it's on the left on Android P, whereas on Android O, it's in the upper right. So they've changed that to make some display accommodations we'll talk about in just a moment. The next thing is they've changed the notifications a little bit. This is slightly different, as you can see. I'm not so sure I like it so much yet. I'll, I'll probably get used to it, and we're not sure this is even the final design at this point. But you'll see it does look a little bit different. The animation is a little bit smoother. And I think it looks pretty good, but it's just a different take and it's less transparent. If you notice the transparency is a little bit different on the back and that's about it. So the other thing here is if we go into the settings itself, you'll see that it's a little bit different. We have these highlighted with different colors now, which does help differentiate which ones you're looking at, which is nice. But the other thing here is that Android P has display accommodations in the sense that it allows for a notch. So maybe you've got an essential phone. Now that's built into the system. So if you have developer options turned on, you can go in there and we can kind of show what it would look like with a notch. Android calls this simulated display with a cutout. So if we simulate one with a narrow display cutout, now we've got a little bit of a notch there, kind of like the essential phone. If we want one with a tall cutout, it takes a second to simulate. And maybe it's not working right now. Let's try one with a wide cutout and see if it works. There we go. So it's just simulating what it would be like. And I'm sure that's why they've moved the clock to the left to accommodate those sorts of things. Now, one of the next things is, is transitions seem to be a little bit different. So if we go home here and then go into the app drawer, and go back out. The transition in certain things seems to be slightly different. Now here we're not seeing too much difference. Let's see if we see it here. Yeah, it's hard to say. Certain things you'll see, other times you won't. But if we go into apps and notifications, it's very similar, but there are some slight changes here and there. There's lots of little tweaks and changes and whether or not that sticks with the final version is hard to say at this point. Now, one of the next things is that they've done with Android P that I really like is that the volume rocker is now finally attached to media specifically. Push it up and down. And instead of having the previous way we did this, like this, it looks much better, I think. And then we can just hit this button here, mute calls, ring, or just vibrate. It's a much better way to do that. And I think will work really well. It's got a nice transition in and out and definitely welcome. The next thing they've done is if you turn it on in your security options and you hold down the power button, similar to what iOS does so that you can stop you from being, stop yourself from being forced to log in using your fingerprint, you can enter lockdown mode. And now if I put my fingerprint on the back, it makes me put in my passcode. So you can do that over and over. If I lock it again, now that I've put my passcode in, it will just unlock by putting my fingerprint back on the back, hold it again, and you can go back into lockdown mode. Now you can also edit screenshots in this version. So you can screenshot right from here. You can do it a couple different ways, but we'll screenshot and We'll pull down here, we'll edit, and now we can edit our screenshots. So this was a long time coming. It's something that we did see for a while on iOS. We can rotate, we can crop, all sorts of things, and that's built in. We'll just go back here and discard that. So that's built in and much needed and very nice. Now, there's some other things that are supported that we can't see just yet, such as indoor turn-by-turn -turn directions. So if you're using Google Maps indoors, as long as there's hardware that supports 802.11mc Wi-Fi protocol, you'll be able to do indoor mapping with this. So maybe you're in a large mall or a large convention center, 
maybe like CES, for example, you'll be able to map that indoors, which would be really nice. One of the other things we don't see just yet is multi-camera support. So if you're going in the camera and maybe you have multiple lenses on different phones, it's now supported natively for multiple cameras, which is a really nice change as well if you're on Android P. Another security measure they've taken is apps running in the background. They actually can't use the microphone and they can't use the camera so they can't snoop on you at all so maybe you're in one of these uh, and maybe you were running say facebook for example it cannot use the camera or microphone so a lot of people are afraid of people listening in which is a, a valid concern you can't do it with android p so that'll be a nice change built right into the os also if your calls are being recorded so maybe you have a call recording app something like that. If your calls are being recorded, it will let you know every 15 seconds by a notable tone that you'll hear or an audible tone you'll hear in the earpiece or your, your Bluetooth headset or whatever you're using to let you know that that call is being recorded. It's built right into the OS and you'll hear it and it just lets parties on both sides know that that's going on. Now, there's also something with your notifications. I don't have any, but there's intelligent notifications. So maybe you're clearing the same notification all the time and not really looking at it. There'll be a little circle with a minus sign in it that's red that you can tell it, I don't care about this notification. Don't show me these again. And so it gets more and more intelligent and makes it less intrusive if you don't care about it. Now there's also a new feature that lets you lock different apps into landscape mode. It's kind of an intelligent landscape using this button here. And when it's enabled, there'll be a fourth icon that appears to kind of let you lock that app in landscape. Maybe you're reading something and you want to read it this way instead of the other way. It will remember that and leave it that way until you hit the button again. So you can go back and forth. It's kind of an intelligent landscape mode. I haven't found an app that will, this works on yet, but it is available. There's a couple other things that are more obvious. There's going to be a lot of other little changes that, that we're not going to see just yet. But the last two things is one of those has to do with autofill. So maybe you're on a website, you're filling something in, and you want it to autofill directly in the website. Certain browsers wouldn't work. Now it will work. So that's cross-compatible and secure. And speaking of security, the... Android P version is now encrypted by default. So there was an option before during boot to decrypt using your passcode. That's built into the OS now. So if you want to wipe the phone, you have to have that passcode. One thing before we go is the new Android P background. So you do that in about just like you always would. And if you close it or go to the app switcher and keep going back and forth, it keeps changing. And you just access that like you always would with the version tap the P there and you can get right into that. So keep going out, go back in and it will change every time. So those are all the major changes to Android P. There's probably a lot more little things that we haven't found yet. Uh, but right now, those are the obvious changes, the visual changes anyway. And it is a nice refinement. I guess messaging within notifications is a lot better. You can see pictures, things like that. I haven't experienced that one myself, but there's going to be a lot of little things. And as the new betas come out, I'll be sure to cover those. Let me know your thoughts about it, though, in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.